In the last video, we talked about ammonium ion being a reduced and usable form of nitrogen. So now we're going to talk about how we incorporate that nitrogen into amino acids. So ammonium ion is toxic at high concentrations. So if it's freely floating in an organism, that's bad because it's toxic. So we don't want ammonium ion to be free, so we must incorporate it into compounds like amino acids and nucleic acids. We have to use it up so that it's not free floating. So there are two ways to do this. Reductive amination and amidation. So uh, these are enzyme catalyzed processes and all organisms have these enzymes. So the reductive amination will be of alpha ketoglutarate. So what we're going to do to alpha ketoglutarate, which is right here, so we're going to take alpha ketoglutarate, which we've seen before in the TCA cycle. So alpha ketoglutarate, here we have um, here we have this alpha ketoglutarate and an ammonium ion. So what we're going to do in this reaction is we're going to take this ammonium ion and just tack it on to this alpha ketoglutarate at this site here, at this uh, carbonyl carbon. And what we get with that alpha ketocarbon to make an alpha amino acid. Now which amino acid is this? If you recall this is glutamate. Right, which we also know as GLUE. Right, so this is glutamate here. So all we did here was add this ammonium ion at this alpha carbon. So the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is glutamate dehydrogenase. Now, if you recall, dehydrogenase steps imply a redox reaction. So what happened here? Well, we had this carbon bound to, to oxygens. Now it's bound to nitrogens. So it was reduced, which makes sense because this is reduction, right? Reduc reductive amination. So we've added the amino group, right? That's the amination portion. We also had to reduce it. So if you recall, we mentioned something that we used as a molecule for biosynthesis, reductive biosynthesis, and that was NADPH. So that's what is actually used here. So NADPH provides the electrons required for this process. So NADPH is oxidized while alpha ketoglutarate is reduced to yield glutamate. Now something important to understand about glutamate is that glutamate gives rise to all other amino acids via a process called transamination, which we'll talk about shortly. We'll see what that's like in just a second. So reductive amination, there's a reduction reaction, and we put an amino group on this. So now once we have glutamate, Glutamate can be turned into, so this here is glutamate. Glutamate, you can add another amino group at this at this side chain here uh, to make it an amide group. So if you recall, this here is glutamine. Glutamine, which is GLN, right, with a Q as its one letter code. So this of course is amidation of glutamate. So we're making an amide group on glutamate to make glutamine. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is glutamine synthetase. This process requires energy so an ATP is used here and turned into an ADP and an inorganic phosphate that looks a little bit like uh, an APP so let me kind of there you go that's a little bit better all right so that's in short how amino groups are, are or excuse me the usable form of nitrogen is usable right we incorporate it here and it's no longer free floating we incorporate it here it's no longer free floating so it's not toxic to the body when it's in the when it's incorporated into a biological molecule now let's talk a little bit more about transamination and how glutamate gives rise to other amino acids. So transamination as a process requires the, a coenzyme called pyridoxal phosphate. And pyridoxal phosphate I've actually drawn here. So this is pyridoxal phosphate. And sometimes it's abbreviated as PYRP or PERP. <laughs> but um this thing is required for transamination. So what is transamination? Well, there's this sort of general reaction. 
So the general reaction, we start off with an amino acid. That amino acid is always going to be glutamate, right? Because it gives rise to all other amino acids. So we take glutamate and we attach it to, or we involve it with a, an alpha keto acid, which is basically something that has a carboxyl group on its alpha carbon, right? And then an R group, okay? Whatever that R group is. And that's going to be an alpha keto acid. What we do then is we basically move, we exchange here, we exchange, we exchange this amino group to attach it here, and this ketone group kind of goes here. So glutamate, of course, looks exactly like alpha ketoglutarate, save for this amino group, right? Right. So if this amino group is lost, we yield alpha ketoglutarate. But alpha, the alpha keto acid, if it has uh, an amino group here, it becomes an amino acid or an alpha amino acid specifically. So this process basically just Transamination, I guess, makes sense, right? We're transferring the amino group onto a different compound, right? So we're taking the amino group from glutamate and attaching it to an alpha keto acid to yield a new amino acid. So the enzyme that, we're, that catalyzes this process is called pyridoxal phosphate dependent amino transferase. So it's kind of a mouthful here. So pyridoxal phosphate. dependent amino transferase. So, that makes sense. Why does that make sense? Well, we're transferring an amino group from glutamate to something else, so the amino transferase portion makes sense. Now this is also pyridoxal phosphate dependent, right? So that means the coenzyme involved here is pyridoxal phosphate. And that's basically it. So, an example of this just beneath it, is that if we have glutamate and we specifically have this keto acid, right, so the R group in this case is just a CH2 and a carboxyl group, you should recognize this compound from before as oxaloacetate. So notice this R group here is just a CH2 and a carboxyl group. So when this carb carbonyl group here is ex exchanged for this amino group and this hydrogen, we get the, the glutamate becomes an alpha ketoglutarate, and this oxaloacetate gets an amino group here. I don't even have to look over here because I know that this side chain is for aspartate, so I should have created aspartate here. And that's actually what we do create. This is aspartate. Right, or um, aspartic acid, aspartate. So this is the new amino acid that we've created. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is uh, a specific um, a specific pyridoxal phosphate dependent amino transferase. In this case, it would be a glutamate aspartate amino transferase, right? But essentially, um, any step would require an amino transferase that is dependent, of course, on that uh, coenzyme there. Okay. Uh, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. One last thing, I am a tutor, so if you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at Mufi University at gmail.com. See the description box below for more details. Thank you for watching.